Good evening. I'd like to call the Teaching and Learning Subcommittee meeting to order. And before I turn it over to Mr. Gilbert and Ms. Holland, I just would like to entertain a motion from one of my colleagues that we move all the facilities into the facility subcommittee meeting. So moved. Thank you. Seconded by Ms. Cahill. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Gilbert, you can start. Thank you. Aye. 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 Tap it. This one? Okay. Good evening, uh, members of the school committee, uh, Superintendent, uh, Mayor Koch. Um, it is with great pleasure uh, that Ms. Holland and I sit here to present uh, the North Quincy High School School Improvement Plan. Um, before I get into um, the plan itself, um, I would just like to, like to acknowledge Ms. Holland's hard work uh, and the hard work of all of our staff who are obviously not here. This is a plan that comes from every single person in our staff gets a say or input into this plan. Um, but I'm gonna start with a story today because I, I think the plan, very important. Um, the who that makes up that plan uh, is the most important. So every morning uh, I walk downstairs from my office at 7.30 to meet um, our special ed buses. And we have a large number of past students that come from different parts of the city we have learning center students and we have LEAP students, kids that have graduated but are, are doing internships outside. And there are two students uh, who I had at um, Broadmeadows um, that every single day uh, they walk up to their teacher with their iPad and they push a button that says, can I go to the, do the announcement with, with Mr. Gilbert? And so one of them affectionately says, come on, meathead Gilbert, and then we walk upstairs. And there are four students that do the morning announcements uh, and these two other students have then now become part of the morning announcements. Um, so uh, one of whom uh, is on the swim team this year. And he brought his fan shirt sign up t uh, form in. Um, and he had 75 t-shirts on the first day um, of trying to sell his fan, fan t-shirt. So um, at the end of every morning announcements, he yells, go Raiders. We walk back downstairs and, and they're off to their own class. And so as, as, as much as we're gonna talk about data and, and talk about um, our school as a whole, um, I just think it's really important to always think about who uh, each, every single one of our individual kids is. There's 1,507 kids uh, at North Quincy High School. No one more important than the other, no story more valuable than the other, but um, I think the school itself, the culture of our school is really about belonging. Um, and finding a sense of belonging. Um, and if you have the ability to come into our cafeteria or into our hallways every day, I, you'll see it in a million, uh, a million different ways. This past year, uh, our MCAS results were very good. Uh, we finished in this to 75th percentile, and also did better than 74% of other high schools uh, that, that we, that we uh, meet with. Or, or excuse me, that are compared to 91% of our high need students did better than the rest of the state. 96% of our low income students did better than the rest of the state. 94% of our EL and former EL students did better um, than their cohort as compared to the rest of the state. Um, our, math, our math scores, uh, I think we, we, we beat the, the state average on exceeding and meeting expectations by over 20 points um, and met every single one of our academic goals last year. Um, and you know me, because I've been doing this for a while, uh, never satisfied with what we did last year. Uh, and I think, I think you'll see that reflected in our goals for this year. So we find places where we feel like we can do better um, and you'll see our math goal is actually two parts. It's, it's about exceeding and meeting expectations, but it's also one particular standard that we didn't do as well as we'd have liked to, and we're trying to increase that one particular standard. Um, and you'll see that in there <clears throat> as well. Our vocal data, I think, speaks very highly of the culture of our school. Uh, we do want to continue to celebrate uh, and to treasure and to cherish each of the cultures of our school. Uh, and so our culture and climate committee this year is going to bring back and recreate an international fair uh, that will take place in March. We're going to lean on uh, Quincy High a little bit because they've done such a great one for so many years. Um, but we're, we're very intent on making sure that all of our, our, our cultures and ethnicities are celebrated. And, and I, I don't think you can learn 
um, if you don't feel like you belong. Um, I was walking down the hall the other day and there was a senior walking by me and I said, hi, Kayla. And she stopped and stared at me. And I said, why are you staring at me? And she said, how do you know my name? And I said, well, I think it isn't my job to know your name. And she said, but yeah, my name. Do you know my last name? I said, I do. She said, don't say it. And I said, can I spell it? She said, no, just give me the first initial. I said, so it's an E. And she said, you're right. I don't, I don't understand. Would you study at, after school? Um, I do actually study after school um, because I do think it's important that every kid knows, uh, is known, and is known well. Uh, and if there's... If everybody has at least one ally uh, that they can always rely on at school, uh, I think that we're doing something uh, really, really right. Uh, we've added a number of different clubs and activities this year, and we continue to. Um, I've actually just, just today became the advisor for the UNICEF club, which apparently is meeting tomorrow. Um, um, <clears throat> so you'll see in there really a reflection of all the interests that our, that our kids have and you know, we do things, you know, kind of um, for them first uh, and to always make sure that, that we um, at least, uh, if we can, um, give them an audience for something that they're interested in. Sometimes we can't run everything, uh, but we, we run an awful lot. Um, when you look at our um, family and community engagement, I think it reflects um, how we feel about our families and want to make sure that we have as many opportunities as we can to provide our families with, with kind of an extended part, and make them part of their, our classrooms or our school through various activities, whether it's concerts or it's our play on, on Friday and Saturday, or it's our um, eighth grade open house next Thursday, or it's our winter concert, which is on the 19th. Um, I think it's really important to find as many ways as possible to engage our families. Uh, I still do a, a, a weekly newsletter that goes home every Monday with links and as much information as I can get in there, uh, send it to families each, each Monday and post it on our website as well. Um, and we're still looking for ways to engage because we, we don't and we're not satisfied yet with um, the fact that we can't have every parent come in for parent conferences. Um, but we use a number of different techniques, thanks to, to, to the superintendent and the assistant superintendent and all the people sitting behind me because um, when I call and say I need help um, trying to engage a family or help with a student, there's not one of them that, that doesn't say, um, what, have you tried this or can we do this or let's meet and talk about this. It really is um, a special place to work. And, and you know, I'm in an interesting position in that I've been a principal at three different places and, and every single school that I've ever been at, um, it, it's the same. That, that kind of caring um, that happens for all of our kids and families, I, I think is just um, truly amazing. Um, I did uh, this year, I sent this to our PAC before uh, it went to, uh, for, in for final submission, asked for their feedback. Um, really got a lot of pats on the back and, 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 and was thank you for including that and appreciate you uh, attending to our students' social emotional learning um, and continuing to, to, to um, focus on social emotional learning as well as academics. So um, I think Ms. Holland wanted to share a couple, a, a quick little story. Um, I uh, you know it's not easy for you guys to get to our school very often, but our new journalism class this year started taking over the Raider Roundup, which is our website. It is on our page on North Quincy High School, and it just really shows the climate and the culture that is in our school. It makes you so happy just looking at what these kids are doing. It introduces the staff, things, projects that they're doing in school. So if you have time, I really recommend that you take a couple minutes to take a look at that. I think you'll like it. Thank you. Um, I think in closing, you know, I think the proudest day of the year last year for me was standing at graduation, handing out diplomas, knowing all the stories and all the effort that went into getting our students uh, to get that diploma and being at all different levels. Um, they leave an elementary school when you're elementary school principal and say, who's, who's going to take care of this guy and who's going to take care of that kid? And then you do the same thing in middle school. Um, and it's just amazing how much at every level goes into that day. 
Um, and I'm just so proud to be the one that gets to shake everybody's hand. Um, I don't know if you could see it last year, but I received about 75 combs um, from students as they walked through the line and said, you might need this for your hair, you might need this for your hair, you might need this for your hair. Um, but it is a special place and a, a place that, that we love to work um, and a place that we're really, really proud of. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone from the committee have a comment or a question? Mr. Santoro's good. Ms. Cahill's good. I, I, think I just want to um, reiterate what you said in the beginning about, um, you know, having interests and, you know, different sports activities and interests and concerts and drama and all that. Um, if we have, this is where it's really important, if we have good leadership in those roles, a good people in those roles, um, it gives the kids and even peer, um, mm. you know, mentors mm. in those different areas. Um, I think that's where we can really help kids to be able to, like you said, feel connected and then they feel like they have someone that they can go to if they need something. Yep. So I, I, I love that, that you um, emphasize that because I think it's really important in whatever area that they're in that they have someone that they can connect with. And I think, and, and, and I thank Mrs. Lebo for bringing the composting. Um, and I said it last year. I didn't get to go to North last year, I don't think, but this year I went a couple of times. Pretty cool. And um, yeah, it's a great, I mean, at lunch, I felt like in both high schools, you really could get a sense of what the cultures, they're both different, but I felt like they were both really, it gave me like a positive um, insight into what the kids are like. And, and mm. it, it's, it's great, it's great to see. So thank you, thank you for thank your you. work. <coughs> It's been the uh, first of all as a graduate of North Quincy High, but also been the beneficiary of my son going there. A big thanks to the teachers, to the mm -hmm. faculty, the staff, and Miss Holland, and um, and Dan. You've really raised the bar on on the culture. I mean, I hear from a lot of the the students how how great you are, you know, and and how the culture is. It's um, it just makes you proud, you know, um, to know all of the good things that are going. And I, you know, I went through the um, the plan and a lot of the SMART goals were super well thought out. You know, I mean, sometimes you think that they're cookie cutter, cut and paste from mm. last year, but it feels like you've really been thoughtful and put a lot of time and stretch goals and, and um, it's pretty impressive. So thank you. Appreciate it. So I have a couple of comments too and a, and a question. Um, the plan was wonderful, it really was. And I wanna say, Mr. Gilbert, that the three schools you've been at that were so caring it's part of your leadership that does that. Mm. And we Thank know you. that, and we appreciate that. So Thank I wanted you. to say that first. I was very happy to see you right. Your scores are amazing. Your vocal survey was great. I was very happy to see your student support goals using the NAN project mm. and trauma-informed practices. But I was most impressed with the fact that you put in a SMART goal about attendance. Uh, and you're looking for a 10%. Our attendance is still, across the board, problematic. It's yep. nowhere near our 2019 yeah. Uh, levels and I and yours is not so, some of the worst, but it's still yeah. much higher than it should be. Yeah. Um, so, and I felt love. I was also concerned about the student with disabilities dropping out. That's a pretty high percentage there mm -hmm. too, and I don't know if that's the same thing as the chronic. Those are the same people who are absent a lot, and then are just we're just losing them yeah. somehow. Yeah. But that was a little concern of mine too. But on the positive side, more on the positive side, um, the the. the um, Extended day opportunities are wonderful. Thank you for mentioning the compost. And not only the composting, but the Green Student Initiative. Those students came to the Garden Club meet, uh, sale the other yep. day, and they want to work with us on invasives yep. in the spring in the park department, or the environmental scientists, or whatever, she, to, get, to get some sort of like an invasive pull thing going, going in the city. So they really, they were wonderful. They presented themselves wonderfully. It, you would have been so proud of them. So mm. I know why you are feel that way. So. Um, I'm really, really thrilled with it. The plan is wonderful. I'll make a motion, take a motion. A motion by Mr. Santori to approve the plan, seconded by Mrs. Cahill. We all approve. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Green Student Movement is actually going to start helping in the CAF, too, with the Waste Diversion Program. Excuse me? The Green, uh, green Student Movement is going to start helping in the CAF during lunches uh, with the composting. Yeah. The students at both high schools have been phenomenal. Pretty amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat>
Good evening, ladies. Good evening. Good evening. Thank you so much for coming, and you can start presenting Atlantic's plan for us. Sure. Thank you. Is Use this, that one. Which mic? <laughs> this one. Okay. Thank you so much, everyone, for having us. Um, as you know, I'm Aliza Schneller. I'm the principal here at Atlantic, not here, at Atlantic Middle School, and this is our assistant principal, Elizabeth Roy. Um, so, again, thank you so much for having us here so that we can tell you how things have been going since we were last here um, at this school committee um, school improvement plan presentation, and so that we can present our improvement plan for you and answer any questions that you might have. Something that we spend a lot of time talking about amongst ourselves with our amazing guidance staff and our wonderful teachers is that we really have seen a shift in students in the past few years due to the pandemic. We don't want to spend our time dwelling on COVID-19 and its lingering effects. Rather, we really are spending our time and our efforts on how best to shift our practices in order to work smarter and best meet our students' needs and help them find success at Atlantic and beyond. First, we have and of course will continue to focus on our students' academic needs. As you can see from our written student school improvement plan, Atlantic students fared very well overall on MCAS and MAP testing. It's possible that we set our sights a little too high with our previous year's goals based on you know, how things had gone in the past and we're also not as specific as we ought to have been. We met our goals which were MAP related at some of our content and grade levels, but not all of them. Atlantic students did do very well on their MCAS tests and were mostly in line with or scored above the district and the state averages. If we wanted to, if we do want to look at the data, that's why we're here, um, we'll start with math. Um, our grade six students did very well with expressions and equations. Grade seven students scored above the state on most of our constructed response questions. Grade eight students did very well on the coordinating slope and the and coordinating plane. At all grade levels, it's clear that our area of focus this year will be geometry. Our math teachers have created action steps that will have some of these geometric concepts integrated into the year more frequently in order to have students feel more comfortable, knowledgeable, and confident when they answer these question types prior or during the tests in the spring. For example, in grade eight, they recently played Battleship using the coordinate plane prior to learning about how to graph geometric figures. Another action step that has already been put into place is for our grade six students. Uh, one of our grade six teachers is piloting a web-based program to help students increase their multiplication and division fact fluency, and his students have already increased their fluency by 30% so far this year. We will review our mid-year map data in January and will continue to tweak if necessary. In terms of our English performance, our grade six students did well regarding inferencing, Grade seven students did really well on questions regarding figurative language and character trait identification. And our grades eight students did very well with their essay writing. Across all grades, we realize that we can improve on our writing. And our grade eight team is also going to have a focus on poetry. Our English, our EL, and our social studies teachers will be supporting this goal in a variety of ways and have a bunch of creative action steps. Some that are somewhat tangible that we can already see that have started. Um, one of our grade six teachers turned an argumentative essay into a writing contest. This argumentative essay is from a turkey's perspective. Um, they do it around Thanksgiving from the perspective of a turkey um, trying to see why they should not be on your Thanksgiving table. Um, so they are very uh, creative and humorous. Um, so there were stuffed animal turkey prizes for the winners in each classes, um, and it motivated students to write longer essays, to check their punctuation, and think more creatively overall. We look forward to write more writing contests around a variety of topics to engage our students and to help them have more stamina when sitting down to write. Also, our grade eight teachers are creating a unit around a novel called Before the Ever After. This is a novel that's written completely in verse, so students will have a whole book to get very comfortable with the topic of poetry. It's about a boy whose father retired from playing football because of the CTE brain disorder, and this story focus on, focuses on the changing relationship of the, between the boy and his father, as well as his feelings about family, change, and his identity. While reading this, our entire eighth grade will get to go to Gillette Stadium to do a hands-on experience regarding helmet design to prevent CTE and concussions in general. I'm really excited to see what designs our students create as well as the connections that they're gonna make between this hands-on experience as, and their reading. 
Throughout the year, our social studies and our EL teachers will be using best practices, targeted review, more project-based learning, and some interdisciplinary interdisciplinary units in order to help students write more effectively, while at the same time, they will also be exploring new curriculum. In turning to our science data, our science MAP scores demonstrated that our area for improvement this year is physical science. Our science team has explored additional hands-on learning experiences that are physical science related. Students will be completing our tried and true maglev train lesson where they design a cardboard train and use the power of magnetism to propel a, a Lego figure on this cardboard train down a slope. There will be also a new experience involving students creating roller coasters and according, uh, accounting I'm sorry, for the amount of potential and kinetic energy in order to give their riders the most safe and fun experience possible. We'll even give out a prize for the safest and most innovative roller coaster design. So I think that you will agree that we have a solid plan for helping students achieve academically in the classroom. And we know that this cannot be our sole focus, that in addition to their academic needs, we need to focus on our students' social emotional needs. Knowing that these needs are very diverse, we can't have a one size fits all approach. So while what I'm going to tell you might seem like a laundry list that's a little more broad than deep, that kind of is exa exactly what it is. Some of the lessons that we will do will meet the needs of some students, and other students might need more targeted interventions with their guidance counselors, um, either individually or in a lunch group. So we will be increasing the number of our open parachute lessons that staff teaches with our students on a regular basis. This fall, they've been exploring the topics of anxiety, resilience, and raising awareness in grade six, overcoming stereotypes in grade seven, and peer inclusion and exclusion for grade eight. This is in addition to the other open parachute content as well as other um, content in their health classes. Um, our health teacher has brought in experts from Dove to speak with grade six students about healthy friendships and from the NAN project to speak with grade eight students about mental health awareness and suicide prevention. We also have this year about 20 students from our grade eight participate in the out of the darkness walk out of the darkness walk in Boston to raise awareness for suicide prevention. It has been very powerful and empowering for our students to acknowledge and speak about these subjects. Additionally, we're so excited about our partnership with the Boston Celtics and our Bella Insurance, um, the all-star initiative with Mr. Sagala, where our students are awarded incentives from the Celtics to come to school every day and to come on time. We just reported this morning on our first month of attendance data, and 369 of our students met the criteria and also for a prize in November. So that means they were on time every day and, and in school all day for the month of November. We are, of course, celebrating those students because it's a wonderful achievement, and we're also reaching out to families of those students who miss the mark. Uh, we need to understand the barriers that might exist and help the students and the families overcome them. That is what, as administrators and our guidance staff, that is what we spend a lot of work on every day. Um, we've also continued our use of community circles um, during our student support block, and we're helping make them even more accessible for all, all of our students, particularly those who are still learning English. In addition, we've been increasing the number of field trips for our students as part of their middle school experience. Our grade eight did a bonding trip, field trip at launch, um, where the whole the whole eighth grade got to bounce and climb and just really enjoy each other's company and come together as a class. Some of our students who receive special education services and English language um, instruction have participated in the Sheriff's Ropes course this fall and also have attended a sporting event at Boston College. <laughs> we have some more academic focus trips in the, in the works, but we really wanted to focus on student personal growth and enabling them to participate in new experiences. That's been our focus for the first part of this year. In helping to improve student social emotional development, we have continued to review and improve our school-wide efforts to build community and promote diversity, equity, and inclusion. Since we last spoke with you, we have continued monthly activities in our student support classes, which we call AMP. Students have made paper firecracker decorations and welcomed to welcome the year of the rabbit, the year of the cat in Vietnam for the Lunar New Year. We have continued our tradition of creating collaborative posters for Black History Month of a famous African American that each AMP class learned about. 
Students learned about Ramadan and did an Islamic art activity. They watched videos and bulleted key information about famous diverse women for Women's History Month. During Mental Health Awareness Month, students identified coping strategies that might be appropriate for them and created bookmarks designed to help them focus and relax while reading. We also made beautiful tissue flowers and read children's books during Asian American Pacific Islander Month. Our EL team hosted a morning of cultural games, student produced videos, activities, and art projects, which engaged our students even further. We have met several times as a staff about the effectiveness of these initiatives, and our teachers have come up with some excellent ideas to make them more meaningful, as well as how to incorporate these topics into their individual classrooms. As a result, so far this school year, we have created large I am displays where students created their piece of a larger artwork filled with adjectives and nouns that describe each of our 560 students. We created a mural in our, in our cafeteria in the style of Frida Kahlo during Hispanic Heritage Month, and students also learned about her life. Most recently, during Native American Heritage Month, students created dream catchers and learned about their significance in the Native American world. We look forward to additional lessons throughout the next two trimesters. We know that students find more success when there is a positive connection between home and school. We had two successful family engagement events so far this year and look forward to more. This Thursday, we have a full schedule of family report card conferences we are so happy to engage our families in conversations about academic. We also know that students engaged in a life in an aspect of life at Atlantic will continue to be more focused on their academics and have an overall more positive middle school experience. Our extended day activities are packed with students, whether they are doing morning gym, student council, video production club, art club, homework help, badminton, science and beyond, Korean club, Mandarin club, grade seven and eight robotics teams who are competing this Saturday, as well as board game club and Dungeons and Dragons. There really is something for everyone at Atlantic. We will be starting auditions for our spring musical in early January. The name of the musical will be revealed in the upcoming weeks. Our tennis and cross country teams fared well this fall with many fantastic athletes and lots of teamwork and our volleyball team as having a wonderful season full of wins, loss, losses, laughs, and of course, camaraderie. We look forward to additional winter sports like swimming and wrestling to further engage some of our students who did not get the chance to participate in the fall and would benefit from being a part of an Atlantic team this year. Lastly, I piloted an intervention program for our eighth grade students with the goal of having students' grades and confidence increase prior to going to high school. This year, I will be leading a group of teachers who will do similar, very targeted interventions with select students after school. We look forward to its success and seeing how we can use some of these strategies elsewhere to help our students. And lastly, um, speaking about our vocal data, as I expressed in my principal's message, we are so thrilled that students and families feel comfortable with our staff, that interactions are positive, and that our staff respects and has high expectations for our students. We are so proud of our staff at Atlantic, our classroom teachers, paraprofessionals, custodians, school nurse, guidance counselors, school psychologist, speech, OT therapist, cafeteria workers, school secretary, all of them work so hard to make sure that everyone feels welcome and included and valued. We know the areas for improvement and will continue to focus our efforts accordingly. In conclusion, we've been really happy with the school year so far and have gotten into a good rhythm. If the past few years tells us anything, it's that we will face some challenges and bumps. Through the culture of Atlantic Middle School, our solid foundation of teamwork, care for students, and high expectations, that will help us come out on top. We will continue to support and challenge our students academically and social emotionally as well, and we will stop to pause, reflect, and regroup along the way. So thank you so much for your support this year and always. Thank you. Mr. Santoro. Thank you, Madam. I need to give you kudos for your science fair, which you didn't mention. Because the way the kids were dressed, not just the topics they chose, their demonstrations, their explanations, their eagerness to tell you about their projects was just superb. 
So I thank you for that effort as well. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. And um, I, sh I should have mentioned it. You are correct. Um, but I, I do want to take that opportunity to just say, you know, our action steps might um, seem a little on the lighter side, um, but if you look at the end of our school improvement plan, we have so many, including our STEM fair that we listed that have been action steps in the past that now are just common practice. They're just the fabric of the school. So I thank you so much. We, it, that is a real team effort. So thank you so much. And thank you for being there, Mr. Santoro. Ms. Cahill? Um, I had some questions about social emotional, um, the, the volume, you know, over the years, but probably maybe Mrs. Papil at some point, I've, I've talked to her about it, but um, do you find it's like overwhelming? I mean, we're so much focus on it now and trying to really get kids the support that they need um, and having, you know, the circles and all that's great. And I'm, I'm thinking like you have the I am posters, right? That gives a real good look into what the kids think about themselves. Yeah. Um, and how we really try and identify who needs more of an individual um, focus, you know. And if we have enough of the, I read an article today, which is interesting, is that a lot of school systems, really big school systems that are having issues, um, are, are outsourcing to um, mm -hmm. tele-health um, um, professionals so that they're the professionals that are really one-on-ones with the kids because they didn't have enough um, on in the system support to support the kids. Um, so I just think like it, there's such a big expansion since 2019, like if we're really able to focus on how to get the kids the, 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 the um, support that they need yeah. individually, you know? Great question. Um, I think that just with the variety of activities that we are doing to address student social emotional needs, we're able to identify those students who are in need of additional support. Um, and we have a wonderful partner with um, Walker Therapeutics, and we have been able to refer a large handful of students, maybe two handfuls of students, yeah. um, that you know um, really benefit from the one-on-one -on -one counseling in school. Um, we are able to get right to the top and and get the the students the help that they need. So um, I'm sure we could benefit from more, but yeah. we are able to identify students, meet with families very very quickly, and get them the support they need. And so, I guess that's yeah. that's just the question. Like, do we feel like yeah. we if we're at a good place and we are supporting the kids, or if there's maybe gaps that we need to be looking at? I, I don't know, but that's probably something we can talk about later. But okay, thank you. Yeah, of thank course. you. Sure. Thank you, Mrs. Cahill. Anybody else, Ms. Hubley? Ms. Agatha, nothing there? Uh, I have one comment. Um, I was really happy to see that you're going to be doing the survey mid-year and end-year on your EDI activities, so it's nice to have some real concrete data so when you start making the goals, they can be smarter. So I was really thrilled to see that. I have one question about, um, I didn't notice any focus on civics, which is going to be a big deal this year, I believe. Yeah, um, we are piloting the grade eight civics MCAS, like all of the other states, so, or the other um, schools and around the, the state. So I think we'll see, I think that'll give us a lot of information as to where to focus our efforts, but, but yes. You're, you're prepping for that, I assume. Yeah, oh, of course, okay. of course. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. Motion to accept the plan by Thank Mr. Santoro, seconded by Mrs. Cahill. All in favor, yes. Thank you so much, this Great. is wonderful. Thank you. Great job, Thank you, ladies. we'll see you next year. <laughs> Good evening, Ms. Barrett. Thank Good you evening. For, thank you for joining us, and you can present um, the uh, Point Webster Middle School Improvement Plan. Good evening. It's an honor to be here this evening on behalf of my assistant principal, Susan DeCoast, the faculty and staff of Point Webster Middle School, to present our 2023-2024 School Improvement Plan. It's a pleasure to work with such caring and dedicated staff, as well as PTO and school council that supports our students and their families. As you all know, Point Webster is comprised of 419 students in grades five through eight, including 61 pre-K students. 
In addition, we are a diverse school in nature and certainly pride ourselves in that. After doing some research this year, we found that we have over 25 different languages spoken by our students and that our students are from over 25 different countries. Historically, we've built school improvement plan goals based on MCAS scores, but in the last four years, we've shifted to analyzing and utilizing the MAP benchmark student growth reports. I did have the opportunity to watch the September 13th school committee meeting and know that you read our plan and we would like to hear a brief synopsis of our goals and action steps. So this evening, I can tell you that our, our data is clear and that we have several key areas to work on moving forward. Our goal is to provide students the support and tools needed to be successful. To give you a little bit of a background in, in regards to the process of working on our school improvement plan, we have assessment days, an assessment team. We analyze both MAP and MCAS data. We check to see if we meet our goals. We look at, at what the data shows, what our strengths are, and our weaknesses as well. We look at previous year's action steps throughout the school year to help inform instruction. At our additional assessment days and through monthly principal path meetings, we monitor, adjust, adapt, and adopt new action steps as needed. A brief synopsis of the 2022-2023 school goals as far as reading, on a positive note, in reading and ELA, we increased our RIT scores in grades 5, 7, and 8 from fall to spring and met our goal in grade 8. Our math goal, we increased our RIT scores in all grades. I'm very proud of our students for meeting this lofty goal in grades 6, 7, and 8. We're pleased with our science and technology and engineering growth. Students in all grades showed improvement in their RIT scores. In addition, we met our goals in grades five, seven, and eight. Our social emotional learning goal, we met our social emotional learning goal through the implementation of three open parachute lessons in each grade and providing student exit ticket results from each lesson. Bringing us to this year and our school improvement goals. After careful analysis of MAP and, and MCAS data, the team identified vocabulary as an area of focus for Point Webster. As stated in the school improvement plan, our MAP RIT scores in vocabulary appears to be a strength compared to informational text and literary text. But our team believes that focusing on building vocabulary skills will support the other MAP reading strands. And again, without a strong vocabulary foundation, the students will struggle to comprehend grade level text on high, on high stakes tests. So as you can see, our, our first goal is related to the vocabulary instructional strand. And you can see on page 12, action steps one through four address vocabulary for all grade levels. We continue to work on improving our math scores in all areas. Our math team identified geometry as an area of focus in grades five, six, and seven. And after careful data analysis of MCAS and MAP scores, operations and algebraic thinking in grade eight. I would like to take the opportunity to thank the superintendent's leadership team and the school committee for our math interventionist at Point Webster. She's assisting students through both push in and pull out models depending upon a class or a student's needs. In addition, we are utilizing ST Math this year in both grades five and six. ST Math has proven to help students in increasing their math skills and we are able to utilize this program without taking time away from our math classes. We have implemented the ST Math program through our student support block and recently found out that we now have access to utilize this program for our grade seven students. Our grade seven students already have been implementing monthly grade seven math challenge days, but now we have the opportunity to utilize ST Math in grade seven as well and we'll be rolling that out uh, the middle of this month. In addition, we have added a morning math program for students in grade five You'll see these action steps reflected in action steps 12, 13, 14, and 15. Again, that's on page 12. When it comes to science, technology, and engineering, the grade five through eight map results do not reflect a universal weakness in a specific science domain. As a result, the science team will continue to monitor science map and science, technology, and engineering MCAS data to inform instruction based on each grade's specific needs. 
We kept our goal the same this year as we are pleased with the direction we are moving in. In addition, you will notice that revi we revised some of our action steps, such as steps one, four, seven, eight, and 10 to more effectively measure and track student growth. We will also continue to work collaboratively as a science, technology, and engineering team to prepare our students to be successful in all areas of testing. Our social emotional learning goal for this year, uh, we had surveyed staff and students in regards to our PBIS program, which is Positive Behavioral Interventions and Supports, school-wide behavior management process, as well as um, <clears throat> an area for us to kind of go over and review expectations with students. We have monthly class meetings, weekly prizes, semester prizes, and we've even added staff prizes. Uh, we, our social-emotional learning goal includes a check-in, check-out program for PBIS, where a staff member, students, where a staff member, excuse me, partners with a student to work on several goals to make them more successful students at Point Webster. I did listen to the other two uh, presentations and. You know, making connections and building relationships with kids is, is key, especially at the middle school level. Um, we teach our students to be on point, and that's respectful, responsible, ready, and safe. Moving on to our extended day activities, Point Webster prides itself with extended day activities. On page 26, you will see a variety of before and after school programs for our students to participate in. Our staff is dedicated to providing these activities based on student interest. Previously, and I'm proud to say our robotics team won the John Adams Division City Championship Award, and including in our extended day activities, our middle school sports, our tennis team won the city championship last year. Those are just a few of our accomplishments of some of our extended day activities. In addition, I pride myself on communicating with families as you can see on page 27, family engagement and communication, we have several school-wide modes of communication that keep our school community informed. For example, parent weekly newsletters and curriculum newsletters, which are now done using the SMORE template, which provides translations for all our families. These do keep parents informed, and I also put them on our school website, thanks to Kelly Powers and the IT department. We build our school's culture and climate through school-wide events, such as the annual cultural fair, our school concerts, our STEM fair, our in-school events, such as Healthy Choices Day, Unique Week, Spirit Days, Point Pride Week events. We combine with Point, with Point Webster combines with Clifford Marshall for the annual family fun run. And last year, we were able to start a new tradition of hosting our grade eight promotion ceremony on the beautiful turf field we have at Point Webster. Lastly, I just wanna take the opportunity to thank all of you for your continued support of Point Webster Middle School and the Point Webster community, the Quincy Point community. Point Webster is truly a special place that I'm proud to say I am principal of. Thank you. Thank you, Christine. Is the Santoro as good as Cato? Um, I just had one one thing about your vocal reflection. The um, you know the books um, textbooks that reflect the student population yes. in the fifth grade. And the, you know they both kind of had a little bit of a forty three percent doesn't think in in thirty nine. Um, can we do better there? How, that's how that's our plan. Um, yeah. If you look at page, I'm sorry, I apologize if I don't have the page number right off the top okay. of my head. Um, on the vocal survey on page. Hmm. Just after page three, I apologize. That's okay. We're looking to, to um, work with our, our librarian mm -hmm. to order books that are more like our students. I think it, I and think I think that's very important, and I know it was discussed last year, which is why we've made it a priority again this year as well. I think we should be able to find, I, um, I think it's a, you know, the way of the world right now that we should be able to, you can go anywhere and find books Absolutely. that we have. Absolutely, agree. Um, and I think if, if the kids feel that way, it's maybe something we should be looking at. Definitely. Um, yeah, and that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Gattro. Hey, Christine. Um, a couple of things. First of all, I love seeing 80, 82% are happy to be at your school. I love, 
love to see the number. Of and of course, I want that higher. I know you do. You know? I know you do. Um, but I, I just want to say that, you know, I believe that you've always been exceptional at family engagement on a variety of different ways. Um, you. you know, it's interesting, and I love hearing how many languages are spoken at a school. And I appreciate you telling us about the accessibility that the, the work that you do to make what's happening in the school approachable, accessible, understandable to parents at home. So uh, thank you for that, um, because I think that's important. And then your, um, your after-school activities as well continue to impress. Thank you. Thank you. That's all because of the faculty and staff, I have to say, though. They're amazing. So good. You know what I'm going to ask you? Are you going to bring back the geography bee? I hope so. I hope <laughs> I so. Say, this is the year to do yet. it. I know, I know. Well, also, we, we kind of took out some action steps because they've become a normal part of our school. For example, you know, uh, you'll see at the end of our, our school improvement plan, they just become yearly things that we automatically do. And we want to get the geography be back on there as well. So that is, that is in the plan. And I will certainly invite you. Thank you. I love your geography. Thank you very much. So I have a, a question and a comment. Uh, the class size is amazing. Oh, great to see that. Thank you for mentioning the mass interventionists. It was important to all of us that the fifth grade there have that opportunity like the rest of the fifth grade did. So I'm really thrilled that they're there and you're being, they're being utilized. I have some concerns about the vocal data, especially on both groups, said that um, people are picking on smaller and younger students. And I really worry about that with the fifth grade, mm -hmm. that um, there, there is, because I know we try to keep them separate, but it seems like that's an issue. Both the fifth grade and the eighth grade are noticing that um, in significant numbers at the school. So mm -hmm. I don't know how you, um, what you can do for that or how you can handle it or how we should address it as a district. Um, I think what we, we try to do each year is um, we have an entrance for our fifth and sixth grade at the front of the building and our seventh and eighth grade on the side of the building. We have our, our each floor is separated by grade. Each wing is separated by grade as well. Um, a lot of what I find is if a, ch if a student has an older sibling, then they know some of the kids that are in older grades that they wouldn't maybe normally, but they get dropped off together or they, they are outside together. So we recently implemented an area that's strictly for grades seven and eight before school and five and six before school as well. Sometimes they like to play sports together and Obviously, as a, as a principal, I'm concerned with fifth graders playing certain sports with eighth graders because of the size difference. So we try to separate uh, before uh, and after school, the same with dismissal. Thank you. Um, I think it's something that we need to watch district-wide because it's, especially where we have the fifth grade in those schools. Uh, and my last thing was um, on your chronic absenteeism. I know that you improved, but your subgroup groups declined. And that's an issue that we're having across the district. So um, yes, are any specific things happening there to help with your chronic absenteeism? We are uh, participating, and we are ecstatic that uh, Mr. Sagala has helped us continue our relationship with the Boston Celtics and the Arabella Foundation, in which we have our all-star program where we are incentivizing uh, student attendance. Uh, right now, we just finished our first month of uh, attendance tallies. Uh, in addition, we've also, and we continue to do this, and we've been doing this uh, since our return from COVID, but we have uh, monthly attendance meetings with parents and guardians and students, as well as inviting um, the attendance officer, uh, you know, to, to make sure people understand the importance of attendance and the importance of being in school each and every day and how much of a difference it makes on you socially, emotionally, and academically. And you're getting parent parental response for those meetings there? Yes. Are you showing up? Yes. That's great. That's it's great. been a long road to get it back to where it was prior to COVID, but we're going to continue to keep doing that. We're nowhere near there yet, but right. hopefully, hopefully someday. I mean, we were at 7.1% as a district in 2019, and we're more than double that now. So it's, it's, a, it's a real problem. But thank you very much. Um, I'm going to entertain a motion by Mrs. Cahill to accept the plan, seconded by Mr. Santoro. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you very much, Ms. Barrett. Thank you very much for your time.
Good evening. Well, thank you so much for giving us the opportunity to discuss with you our school improvement plan and to share with you where we are and where we will continue to push to be. Academic life is so important to us, but so is the connection our students have to both our school and community. Since we last met, and as you see on page 32 and 33, our Beyond the Bell school activities continue to be full, and as every year students present ideas of new activities, for example, this year, we added card collecting club and a creative writing club. There are just a few of our Beyond the Bell activities that have been organized or students have provided their input. We have and will be continuing with our 3D printing club, running club, early bird soccer, prism, sad, sorry, I missed one, and tabletop and board game club. I would like to acknowledge Central Assistant Principal Kathy Mahoney. Kathy continues to be an asset to Central Middle School by on top of her daily duties as Assistant Principal. She continues to advise all SAD group leaders and being the Diversity Club Advisor, which created our We Are Central multicultural event. These are just a few examples of how she goes above and beyond for the students and families at Central Middle School. I've asked Kathy to share with you what the We Are Central event was all about. Thank you. And hello, everyone. It's so nice to see you all. Thanks for having us here. Um, first, I just wanted to say that we are very happy to see participation in our diversity club continue to grow and create new ideas for the whole school. These students are the leaders for diversity, but try to get all students involved and give students an opportunity to have their voices heard. As Rick mentioned, we were very excited to host our first ever We Are Central multicultural event this past spring. This event was brought forth by the students in our school diversity club, after school diversity club. These students had voiced their desire to highlight and celebrate ethnic backgrounds and cultural richness of all the students at Central. They recognized the diverse community we have at Central and wanted to learn more about each other. As a group, they first brainstormed ideas and delegated initial jobs to all members. They worked in small groups. They started out by creating flyers to advertise the event, inviting the school's community neighbors and local businesses to help support this special occasion, and then they created a letter to the students, teachers, and families about volunteering. Another group wrote a script to make phone calls and to email out to ask local businesses to help in any way. One group mapped out a plan for the event, while another created props. The overwhelming response to our students from teachers, families, and the community was beyond impressive. These students did a fantastic job of organizing the immense amount of replies, making a program for the day, drawing a floor plan, and designing a passport with a logo for the students to attend. Teachers in their classes created a wide variety of projects. Just about every teacher submitted projects with hundreds of students' projects displayed in our gym. A picture of the art club's creation can be found on the front cover. Central students, along with their parents and families, volunteered to share numerous performances as well, including traditional dances and musical performances. We had about 10 different performances on stage throughout the afternoon in our auditorium. The students were so proud to have their families celebrating their cultures with us. We also had numerous local restaurants donate a variety of food who were beyond generous, and our cafeteria was filled with hundreds of people tasting food from around the world. The Diversity Club did an amazing job hosting Central's first annual We Are Central event. We wouldn't have expected to have over 500 people attend this event. The success was also due to the participation from students outside the club, Central staff, and parents and family volunteers. It was an honor for us to work with these students and assist and guide them along the way. We are so proud of them for having a vision and for speaking up. It is our hope to make the multicultural event a new tradition for our community, and we look forward to running it again this spring. Thank you, Kathy. We have a few upcoming events that you all are more than welcome to attend. December 15th is an in-school Taylor Swift Eras Tour fundraiser. <laughs> that if you missed out on going to her movie concert, we have a seat and merch ready for you. December 21st is our winter concert at 7 p.m. 
we have three drama productions of Newsies Jr. on January 11th and 12th at 7 p.m. and the 13th at 2 p.m. We're looking forward to our 23rd Grade 8 World Language Fashion Show. Last year, we had 19 students welcome the audience with an opening greeting in their home language. A picture of the end of the celebration can be seen on the front cover of the School Improvement Plan. And we continue with our school collaboration initiative of Principal's Path. This year's plan has been created to continue with our school atmosphere for our staff to come together as one school. All grade level teachers share students, which allows the teachers to plan, develop, and implement best practices for all students, regardless of the type of learner that's in front of them. Through the Principal's Path, teachers will have the opportunity to engage in peer observations, coaching, and collaborative planning to enhance their curriculum. We've created action steps and professional development to continue to push Central on the path as an academic model. As we reflected and analyzed our 22-23 goals and map data, which can be seen on pages three and four, we made progress towards our goal and showed growth, specifically mathematics, where each grade exceeded the goal of an increase of three RIT points on their own and all grades increased by at least seven RIT points. In science, grade eight exceeded the goal of four RIT points, and in grades six and seven were tenths of a point away of meeting their goal. And in reading, we exceeded the whole school goal of increasing by three RIT points. Grades seven and eight increased by more than four RIT points on their own, and grades six increased by 1.9, while all staying well above the national norm. Our academic goals may have been on map scores, but we have not forgotten about MCAS, and in analyzing the 22-23 data, we found our scores were superior to the state scores in all subject areas and grade levels. Our English language arts exceeding expectation scores were similar to 21-22 scores, with an increase in grades six and seven, and a slight decrease in grade eight. But as a grade level cohort, they increased by 2% in exceeding and meeting expectations. In mathematics, a school-wide analysis documented an increase in exceeding and meeting expectation scores in grades six and seven, and stayed even in grade eight when compared to our 22 scores. And in science and technology, we had a slight decrease in our students exceeding and meeting expectations. But to help improve our reading and map and ELA scores, it's clear that central students will benefit from an intentional focus. And in grade six, we'll emphasize on paired text lessons. Grade seven, we'll emphasize on close reading strategies. Grade eight, we'll emphasize on writing across the curriculum and poetry structure. This year, for math, to help improve our MAP, M MAP and MCAS scores, as seen on page 12, in grade six, there'll be a specific focus on the real and complex number systems, as well as geometry. Grade seven, statistics and probability. Grade eight, operations and algebraic thinking. We've continued our successful strategies, like math focus SSBs, for all teachers to be able to support students in need of extra support. In science, we'll have, we have ramping it up for ramping up for MCAS Wednesdays, and in each grade level, we'll focus on a science domain to support reaching this goal. Grade six, physical science, grade seven, earth science, and grade eight, life science. For the 23-24 school year, we've added two new school improvement plan goals. Grade eight students soon will be given the bonus MCAS exam on civics. They currently have to complete a grade eight civics project. So as seen on page 19, it was decided that it's time to develop a social studies goal. However, the social studies team will still continue to collaborate with the reading and ELA goal to ensure success in our SMART goal one. In addition to the new social studies goal, we have added our new diversity, equity, and inclusion goal as seen on page 25. As you can see, in looking at page 21, we still have our social emotional goal, but our new diversity and equity and inclusion goal was developed in collaboration with Central Citywide DEI parent representatives, Heather McDuffis and Phoebe Chan. We are fortunate to have established this working collaboration over the past three school years. Our PBIS program continues to be an incredible success. Each year, the staff work together to find encouraging ways to motivate positive behavior. For example, when Rams of the Week are drawn, students have a variety of choices for their reward, like making something on a 3D printer or going to the gym with a friend for SSB. All three grades have Rams of the Month, as seen on the cover page, and those students are recognized at an assembly, and families and the student receive a congratulatory card with messages from their teachers, guidance counselor, Kathy, and myself.
when looking at the vocal survey on page 46. Results of our PBIS focus with the acronym of RAMS can be seen, with R standing for respect. 95% of the grade eight felt the staff reflects all students, no matter of the race, or respects all students, no matter of the race, culture, family income, religion, sex, or sexual orientation. A is for attitude. 95% of the students are open to having friends who come from different backgrounds. M is for motivation. 96% felt that teachers believe that all students can do well in their learning. S is for safety. 91% felt that they inform an adult in the school that a bullying, that a bullying issue will be addressed. Before I conclude, I wanted to thank you all for your support with the unprecedented in incident that happened at Central last year. Fortunately, this was a situation that most will never have to deal with, but because it did happen, I wanted to make sure I took this opportunity to thank Superintendent Mulvey, Assistant Superintendent Perkins, Mara Papil, and the other members of the Superintendent's leadership team, as well as the Quincy Police Department, who are all great assistants during this unfortunate incident. I also want to recognize the students and their families because they put their trust in us every day to keep the kids safe and we are always doing what is in their best interest. I also want to make sure that I recognize the central staff for having faith in our leadership and always willing to do what is best for our students. The next morning they put their own concerns and feelings aside, showed up to school early to prepare for how we would address the students and we're, and we're all on board to ensure we provided our students a chance to share their feelings, hear from their peers, and support one another. There are so many amazing things happening in and out of the classroom at Central, and words cannot express the pride I have for the Central community and to be the principal of such a amazing school. So again, I thank you for allowing us to share the school improvement plan, and as always, for the tremendous support you and Mayor Koch always provide. Thank you. Mr. Santoro, questions or comments? I just want to thank you because I've been there as the principal of that great building. And in the year 2000, I had an idea to take the cultures we had. We had an African drum group in the gymnasium. We had Asian kids dancing and playing instruments. We had a teacher by the name of Ricardo Cordero, who said, why don't we start a fashion show from fashions around the world? My head off to you for continuing such a great tradition in the many things that you do. Congratulations. And our hats are off to you as well. So thank you for your leadership and showing us the way. I think I think that's a great statement there is, you know, all the everyone that comes and presents you're just building on the things that are yeah. successful and make, you know, and getting things to where they are today and, and reflecting on what works and what doesn't work. Um, and, and that's why we end up having the success of looking at the data and the map data and all that to be able to really identify where we need to do better or where we're doing well, you know, and, and Central's great. Um, I have a question. This is kind of a, a question for everyone. When we have the vocal data reflections, um, do we ask the same questions every year? So we can see, like, if we're improving with kind of like action steps that we might Questions be taking. Questions come from the state. Okay. Okay. You know, good. And, um, when we presented to the, the families about it, we made some, you know, jokes about knowing, you know, the answers to the questions. Yeah. I mean, answers to the test before. So like an incident might happen, and we're like, great. It's a hundred percent of the kids are now going to say that they may have seen something at school that yeah. shouldn't be there or something. So. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think it's an inter you know it's an interesting system. But I probably asked this question last year. I think if if it was the same questions. And I'm asking the same question this year, so you should know the answer. Um, because I think that's a, good, that's a good way for us to see, like, if we're doing things that are helping to change the, the reflections, you know, later. But it's kind of a, an interesting format anyway. But, okay, but thank you for the work you're doing. Thank you. Thank you. Um, as always, appreciate your leadership, Rick and Kathy. Um, you know, it, it, it's astonishing for me to think back that, my kids went there now eight years ago, and the school is what, 10 years old? Mm -hmm. 10 years old. Um, gorgeous facility, and, and I know that we're going to talk about all facilities, issues in facilities, but you have the largest laundry list of 
facility's needs, either you're incredibly fastidious <laughs> or um, or something, something's amiss. I, I just wanted to ask you about one, one specific question, which was the intermittent electrical surges. Mm -hmm. um, haven't heard that in any other school. Do you know what the cause is and how it spread? No, um, I think, uh, you know, we see it maybe a little bit more when you have, you know, the, the TVs in the, the hallways or you see, you know, we have digital clocks. So we see the, the when something goes wrong and maybe in other school buildings they wouldn't see that as much. That's my only thing I can say. Has so it like, been noticeable more and more and more? Or when you say intermittent, do you mean weekly, monthly, uh, a few times a year? I, I would lean more monthly. Uh, monthly? Yeah. And you're losing computers and other things. I wouldn't like say we're losing. Okay. You can you can see that when a computer doesn't start, um, you know, because it may have been restarted. Interesting. You know. Yeah. Well, I'm sure we'll bring that up in facilities. But thanks for all you do. Great work. Thank you. Appreciate it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So for those, for those who didn't hear, um, Civic's goal is great, and I love your parent representative on the DEI. My concern with the um, facilities, we moved everything into facilities subcommittee, but my concern is that you have said, you said there's a black substance growing on the walls, the brick walls and the windowsills outside, and I think we should really take a look and see if that's mold or what that could be before we just... We have alerted Mr. Hines that there's... Okay. Okay, because I would really, that's a very big concern. I think whenever we've opened a building, we've seen some of these same things, unfortunately, uh, with, with what we think is going to happen and what doesn't quite happen when the buildings are new. So I, I'm not surprised that the punch list is enormous. Um, it's unfortunate, but with new buildings, sometimes things aren't exactly what you thought they were going to be. Um, I, I'm a little concerned about the fact that your chronic absenteeism declined, as it did for your subgroups. So even though it wasn't horrible, it was better last year. Mm -hmm. And so that's something that we have to really start paying attention to also. Um, and I think that the scores, the, the data is excellent, really is excellent. So congratulations to you and your staff. And I'd like to make a motion to accept your plan by Mr. Santoro, seconded by Mrs. Cahill, and all in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Thank you for joining us, and you can present as soon as you're ready. Thank you for having us. Good evening, Chairperson Lebo, Vice Chair Santoro, Superintendent Mulvey, and members of the school committee. Ms. Foley and I are happy to be here this evening to share with you our plan for the 2023-2024 school year. We are very proud to represent the staff, students, and families of Southwest Middle School. We have put together our school improvement plan with them at the forefront and based on the premise that our students come first and that they deserve the very best. It is with great excitement that we present to you a school improvement plan that we feel encapsulates just that. Before we present our plan to you, there are so many people who I must express my appreciation. The staff at Southwest have worked tirelessly to review data reflect on best practices, 
create goals and action steps that will move our students forward. Superintendent Mulvey and Assistant Superintendent Perkins have supported Southwest every step of the way. Directors Mara Papillo, Mike Morani, and Julie Graham have generously shared their time and expertise with us. And Bridget Vaughn, Kim Quinn, Chris Tierney, and so many others have been there for phone calls and planning sessions and much, much more. We also have an outstanding PTO and school council with whom we shared this plan and got valuable feedback. This plan is, as is all we do at Southwest, a true team effort. I have been so fortunate to work with Sue Foley, our assistant principal. She is invaluable. She works tire tirelessly for our students. Some of her daily tasks include, but are not limited to, managing school discipline, supporting staff, evaluating staff, resolving student conflicts, and I have to mention that she is very talented when it comes to scheduling. Sue is a constant support for our students and families. She, she takes on each day with energy and a positive attitude, and we are lucky to have her at Southwest. And here tonight. <laughs> As we began the process of creating this plan, we started with a frank and honest review of what has come before. The 2022-23 school year brought much to celebrate. Our students had great achievements academically, athletically, and artistically. In the classroom, our students reached for new heights in our STEM fair, one school, one book, science showcase, playoffs, and many other classroom assignments and initiatives highlighted their academic growth. On the stage, our drama club students dazzled with their production of Alice in Wonderland, as did our choir and band students in their winter and spring concerts. Our art students showed their unbelievable creati creativity in their submissions for the annual art show. And on the field, our student athletes continued to show their competitive spirit. Our students even took on the Spartan race at Fenway Park with over 30 students participating in that event. Our students learned important leadership skills as part of our active student council. The inclusion into our schedule of our enrichment program, which featured choices ranging from basketball to origami to digital story writing, allowed us a unique opportunity to foster positive relationships between students and staff. With this interest-based curriculum in mind, we greatly increased our extended day offerings to over 25 different clubs and activities with over 250 students taking part. Numerous field trips allowed our students the opportunity to explore the world and our community. Spirit weeks, dances, movie nights, and the eighth grade semi-formal gave us a chance to have fun together. Events held in conjunction with Lincoln Hancock strengthened our sense of community. And all these things and so many more, our students showed their eagle spirit and made us so very proud. When we presented our plan last year, we noted that we were presenting to you a plan with two focuses. The first of those focus was improving the culture and climate within our building to create an environment that is inclusive, supportive, culturally responsive, and focused on community. In this area, we feel we have met great success. Our vocal data indicates that our students feel respected and valued by our staff. The regular use of open parachute lessons and restorative practices supported the social and emotional needs of our students and worked to create an, environment, an atmosphere in which all feel able to learn. The implementation of lessons centered around themes of diversity and inclusion showed our commitment to celebrating and valuing the many different cultures and backgrounds that make up our learning community. Our community meetings brought us together on a regular basis to celebrate student successes and cover important topics together. In the last year, we have seen the, the climate of Southwest grow stronger, and we know this is only the beginning. We continue to examine how we handle student conduct, conduct and how we can best utilize restorative practices, the supports of PBIS, our student support center, community meetings, guidance resources, and alternatives such as Saturday school to address student behavior while also keeping our students in class where they belong. This desire to positively impact student behavior drives our social emotional goal, which focuses both on improving chronic absenteeism, an area in which we saw significant improvement in 22-23, but in which we know we can always do better, as well as intervening in student behavior in a positive way. To do this, we will continue to team discipline with admin and guidance to get to the heart of issues related to student conduct in the hopes of those issues not being repeated, 
and will utilize a system of progressive, progressive discipline whenever possible, which is made very clear to our students at the outset of the school year. Our vocal data helps us here as it shows us the work we still have to do in helping our students to form positive relationships with their peers and treat each other in a way that is supportive and respectful. We are confident that these steps, coupled with what is already in motion, will allow us to continue to develop a school culture that is second to none. The second focus of our plan last year was academic. To measure our growth in this area, we had to take a very close look at both MAP and MCAS data from the 22-23 school year, as well as the goals set down in our improvement plan for that year. In regards to the content areas of ELA and math, in which we set a goal of a rip point improvement above the fall average of 5 and 5.5 points respectively, we did not meet those goals. However, our students did continue to show steady growth throughout the year on MAP testing. In the area of science, our goal was a rip point improvement above the fall average of four points. We are pleased to say that we met that goal and our students at all grade levels showed very solid growth in science all year. While we are very pleased with the growth of our students on the MAP test, we also recognize the importance of MCAS data as well and what that data shows about the learning of our students. In the 22-23 school year, our MCAS average composite scaled score in ELA did decrease and only improved only slightly but below our targets in math and science. These trends were consistent amongst our subgroups as well, with our EL and formula EL students showing the greatest drop in achievement. In looking at student performance indicators, it continues to hold true that over 50% of our students fall into categories of not meeting or partially meeting expectations. However, we did see some growth in students reaching the exceeding expectations categories, which made us extremely proud. As it relates to the, relates to the item analysis, items and standards analysis, our students continue to struggle with written performance tasks across all content areas. In, all, in, in the area of student growth, however, we celebrate the, ins, the significant increase in mean, mean student growth percentile with many, many of our students falling into the category of typical growth high. This review of MCAS data has provided the cornerstone for our learning goals for this school year as it speaks to where the focus should be, continuing to move all our students forward in a meaningful way. To do this, we know we need to provide our students with quality, differentiated and targeted tier one instruction, as well as valuable tier two and three supports as needed. Our time together as a staff has been spent reflecting on practice and looking for those areas in which we can improve the instruction and support we are giving our students. To this end, the superintendent's leadership team, as well as math consultant Molly Voke, have been invaluable. With their support, we have implemented regularly scheduled curriculum meetings in both math and ELA. During this time, our educators come together to discuss issues relevant to their content areas. In addition, our teachers have been observing each other, co-planning, collaborating on data, and co-teaching as they investigate strategies to best support our learners. Our dynamic schedule has allowed our staff time to come together in vertical, school-wide, and grade-level teams to discuss how our students learn and to make plans for how to help them succeed. Through our work at Assessment Day 1, as well as in their curriculum and vertical team meetings, we have set forth the following learning goals for the 23-24 school year. In ELA, in conjunction with reading and social studies, our goal is to see an improvement in our students' ability to write text-based responses and narratives. We propose to do that by providing our students with a multi-tiered system of support that ensures targeted academic English language development, specifically focused on idea development and language conventions. It is our hope that our students will show mastery of this goal by demonstrating an increase of five percentage points in school percentage points possible for the question type essay on the Spring 24 MCAS. The action steps created to support this goal speak directly to it as they create a plan in which our teachers will provide specific instructions on the skills necessary to improve writing while challenging our students with tasks that require a higher depth of knowledge, but while also providing targeted supports to those students who need it. In the area of math, our goal for the 23-24 school year looks for all students to show evidence of growth and achievement in domains specific to their grade level and as identified by an in-depth review of the results by standards report. For example, grade five seeks to increase by 4% in numbers and operations in base 10, while grade seven and eight are looking for a 5% increase in expressions and in the expressions and equations domain. Action steps created to support this goal include time spent working and planning with Molly Voki, as well as the adoption of a variety of new and exciting teaching strategies to, pr to promote student engagement and understanding, while also bringing in some important new resources such as ST math in grades five and six, and building the thinking classroom across all grades. 
In the area of science, our goal for the 23-24 school year focuses on students improving in their ability to perform higher level thinking skills in the STE classroom, such as inferring, reasoning, applying, and analyzing. Mastery of these important skills will, improve, will both improve student performance in the day-to-day -day classroom as well as in their testing. Mastery of this goal will be measured by an increase of five percentage points in school possible points on both constructive constructed and selective response questions. Action steps to include to support this goal include the increased opportunities for staff to collaborate on best practices for promoting higher level thinking skills, as well as more opportunities in the science classroom for inquiry-based learning. Our review of both our MCAS data and our access data have shown a strong need to incorporate more supports for our large population of EL and former EL students. To this end, we have added a fourth student learning goal this year, which looks for evidence of growth and achievement as indicated on the 2024 access test for each domain, reading, writing, listening, and speaking. Progress towards this goal will be measured by an overall increase of 10% in the number of students reaching their proficiency targets from a base of 24% in 2223, as measured by this 2024 access test. Action steps created to support this step allow for increased collaboration between our EL staff and our regular ed teachers to ensure supports exist for our students across the curriculum. We are confident that our plan for this school year is strong. There is much to be done, but we are secure that working together with our students at the forefront, we will get there. Our students at Southwest deserve no less than our very best every day that is what we strive to provide through this implementation of this plan. And thank you for allowing us this opportunity to present this plan to you tonight, and thank you for your ongoing support each and every year. Ms. Cahill. You have to work like two days in one day to get this stuff done. <laughs> and, and I think the, the thing that I really love to hear is, um, because I had a question with one a new teacher asking her if, um, as a community in the school, if you talk to each other about implementing some of the, you know, strategies and how it works in a specific classroom and if things are working well and not working well. So hearing the collaboration between specialists and, and, and the classroom teachers, I think, is, it makes so much sense, you know. Um, and so, so, so much great work. And actually, the, the extended day stuff um, for, I think, kids is so important, too, because it, you know, takes away that free time of not really doing anything, keeps them engaged in relationships and all that. So the, your schedule is amazing. Um, when you're, like, the social-emotional work and all the work you're doing in the culture, um, are you finding that you're seeing results in, in attendance and also in the incidences so far this year? Like, what kind of um, results are you seeing? Yeah, I think that we, we started to work on that last year a little bit, and it's really a big focus of ours. So we have a student support meeting tomorrow morning, um, and we have restructured that a little bit. So now we, Sue and myself specifically, have different pieces that we report out about um, attendance is one section. We go over plans and what we're doing, making sure that we check with our last meeting, like what was accomplished, what is done, what's left to be done, and we're doing the same thing for discipline and looking at our numbers, running reports constantly, trying to have parents in or make different plans um, to support students. So we're looking at it weekly and then in addition reaching out to teams and families to get more support. And I think we are seeing, uh, you know, I handle, you know, the kind of day-to-day -day student discipline and conduct, and I think we're definitely seeing an impact this year, a positive impact. Um, you know, our teachers are like, we very transparent in terms of reporting what's happening in their classroom, um, which makes it like very, very helpful. We use Aspen reporting. Um, so, you know, we can see like in real time, we use the journal in Aspen as well as the conduct referrals, mm -hmm. which lets us, if I pull up a student who sent to me, I can see exactly how his day has been, if he's had any incidents in his teachers, in his classrooms that haven't been sent to me. Um, I can see where his, where his or her strengths or weaknesses are. I can see, you know, what previous issues they've like run into. So I think by that kind of very transparent reporting, like we, we really know what's going on with our kids and we can address it with them. Uh, we've also like greatly expanded, expanded our check-in, check-out system this year. Um, so we have a, a very large number of kids who are assigned to, you know, a teacher um, that they don't have in class, just a teacher they feel comfortable with. They check in in the morning. Um, they kind of get a pep talk to start their day, make sure they have everything. They check out at the end of the day. Um, different teachers incentivize that differently, but I think that accountability um, for the kids has been huge. So I do think when this year ends, we're very, very optimistic. Like right now, 
we're trending in a positive direction when comparing like the data for the first three months of the school year this year to last year. I think we're going to find um, a real significant improvement. Sorry, I hope <laughs> we're going to find a real significant improvement. Um, and I think if you walk through the school this year versus last year, you notice it. There's a, a very calm vibe in the school this year, um, a very productive vibe in the school this year. And part of that comes with what the teachers are doing the engagement in classrooms with these new teaching strategies they've been employing is like through the roof. Um, you should really come in and like in our math classes, the kids are up out of the seats, the desks are gone. The kids are truly engaged and truly thinking. Um, so I think that helps with the with the discipline aspect as well. They want to be in class. They do. Um, they're engaged. It's a reflection, right, of the leadership and the and the teachers and everyone and all the work that you're doing. So that really it, that's where you see it. Um, and my last question is, what's your book that you're reading this year? Because I read last year's and I loved it. We'll send you a copy. Okay. We haven't. We so we were going to have that at the beginning of the school year, but then we decided we would have it after testing. We would do the one, the, um, we would introduce the book in the spring after testing, just because we have such a focus on curriculum and planning together right now, to have it interrupt right now wouldn't be a good time. So it's it's called Flush. Okay, good. We'll get you a Thank copy. You. Mm -hmm. Great. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for your work. Mr. Santoro. Thank you. I have no doubt that you'll carry on with the goals you have, have identified. What I want to thank you for is to lump the 30 some odd extended day activities that pair children with adults to establish relationships in rememberable occasions because I know when they get our age, they forget who even who the teachers were except for those moments when you establish those relationships in those programs. So I thank you. Well done. Thank you. Thank you. Mrs. Hoogley. Thank you. I, I also wanted to say this is so impressive, your extended day offerings. And I did note that um, you have financial literacy. That's <laughs> awesome for the seventh and eighth graders to have a financial literacy option for after after. That's yeah, that's we were excited amazing. about that. Yeah, that's that's a new and addition. That's a new teacher year. too coming yeah, in. So. That, that's really great. Yeah. That's really, really great. Um, I also wanted to ask, um, under your, um, under facilities, but it's not facilities, um, it says you're looking for a, a fourth full-time EL teacher. Um, how are you sustaining right now with your numbers with needing that position? It says it's needed. For so last year we had two full-time. We have three full-time um, EL teachers right now, and we've seen a huge improvement um, with different things we're able to do with their schedule and pushing students out if they need to, and just being very flexible and creative with how we um, schedule our EL population. So four is like really a wish list, but it would be great to have one at each grade eventually. You know? um, a few years ago, we picked up a fourth special ed teacher to, to be teaching like, you know, at each grade level, and having one for each grade level dedicated to each grade level has been like a game changer in terms of the ability of those teachers to push into classes and then pull out when necessary. And with our EL students, we really want to get to a point where, you know, they're spending kind of as minimal time as possible in those pull-out classes so that they can be in those language-rich content area classes. Um, but we also recognize that they need the support. So a EL teacher at each grade level uh, would allow us to have, you know, our EL students scheduled, you know, for any pull-out support they need when they're first kind of, you know, the level ones, once they're just getting their feet wet with the English language, but really be supported um, in science, math, social studies, reading, um, you know, when they push out to those classes. So it would, it, like Courtney said, it would be yeah. a game changer. Mm -hmm. um, okay. It, it, we're, we're making do, obviously. You know, it's, it's yeah. going well. Uh, the EL teachers we have this year are phenomenal. We picked up two new ones this year who are just top notch. Um, and then we have, you know, our veterans as well. But it would be huge. Okay. Yeah, our, our new teachers are amazing. Great. Thank you yeah. so much. Thank you. Mr. Bugoli, anything? Uh, and the measure of success of, of school is when a parent comes up to me and uh, says great things about Southwest and what's happening over there. I think I shared that with you before. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm glad to see this using vertical teams, the communication between the grades. I think that's critical in uh, developing uh, curriculum. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, kudos to you guys. You're doing a great job. Thank you. Thank you. Everything that I want to say has been said. I mean, clearly a new school is phenomenal, the new field. But your combined leadership is what is putting it over the top. You know, you can feel a new vibe over there, which is really great. Um, and, and the feedback, as Mr. Bergoli says, is super. 
So uh, three specific things. Appreciate the thoughtfulness and specificity in, on the SMART goals this year. I, I uh, noticed that and appreciate it. Everybody mentioned extended day. Love the diversity. I mean, I found them really interesting. Some of the offerings were really uh, interesting in the diversity, and I was like, ooh, I'd like to participate <laughs> in some of those. And then uh, I wanted to congratulate you on the shortest facility needs list of all of the schools <laughs> in, in the city. Uh, much appreciated. So thank you. Thank you very thank much. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Gutcher. I have, I, again, same thing as my, my colleagues. A great extended day is incredible. I want to thank you so much for the principal's path. Reading that, I really felt like I had a feeling for the school and for what you guys were doing. And I want to say I know you're lucky to have Ms. Foley. We're lucky to have both of you. We really are. So, And I'm, and we know that. Um, I'm so happy you have a chronic absent, absenteeism goal in there. Um, we have concerns, obviously, about the incident reports, and as I know you do, and I'm hoping that the trend stays that way, and I'm sure you're doing tons to make that happen. I, one question, I'm not even sure it's for you or if it's for our data guy. Um, I don't understand why you're requiring assistance or intervention because not all, everything was typical growth. I, I don't quite understand that. They declined in one thing, um, chronic absenteeism. I, I, am I missing something? It's a, no, it's no. not. Okay. Okay. I'm sorry. Yeah, so on the accountability report there, um, sorry, at the top of the page there, it will uh, give a de definition for why uh, they were flagged as requiring assistance or intervention. Uh, so it could be for a, a particular subgroup being in with the, within the lowest 5% of the state um, in regards to whether scores or chronic absenteeism, something along those lines. So it should, it should indicate it up there. Uh, it may be very small print, though. Yeah, they, theirs is a subgroup. It says it's white. A, yeah, it's a, it it's, says white. It's, yeah. No, no yeah. indication whether those white kids speak are English language learners or have students are students with disabilities. So it's really, I mean, you have some of the highest risk population in our city, and I'm grateful that you're here doing all these great things for them. And really, the extended day stuff is wonderful, but it makes little sense to me that that's going to be. I mean, you have to do it, I guess, but it makes little sense to me. I want, I want to thank you. I just think uh, great to have the feeling from the pathway thing and also from hearing you guys talk and be so positive and, and committed to doing the greatest things that, for those kids. So thank you very much. I'm going to take a motion to accept the plan by Mr. Santoro, seconded by Mrs. Cahill. All in favor? Thank you again thank for you. everything. Thank you. That's easier. Good Less evening. moving. <laughs> How's everybody doing tonight? Very good. Good, good. Uh, first of all, folks, thank you so much. Thank you for having me, uh, Quincy School Committee members. Uh, let me begin by thanking you for the opportunity to present our 2023-2024 Broadmeadows School Improvement Plan. It is my honor to be in my first year as the principal of the Broadmeadows Middle School, working along with the dedicated and caring staff of individuals to support uh, and support personnel to serve the students and families of the Meadows community. This evening, I look forward to sharing with you our reflections on our progress from last year, as well as our considerations for next steps looking ahead. What has been crucial in my first 60 days, more than anything else, however, is the work in building relationships with our students first and foremost, with our families and with the Broad Meadows staff. It is through these relationships and connections that will help us understand one another and give us the overall direction of where we're headed. Giving students and families a voice through these conversations, both formal and informal, will help me better understand the needs of Broadmeadows community and how best to move forward. Reflecting on the prior year's data with staff at our assessment day, we noted an interesting mix of achievement in areas that needed additional focus. As noted on page six, we did not meet overall growth projections on reading map assessment for grades six to eight, however saw a marked 5.9 point increase in the overall average MCAS scaled score on the English language arts MCAS assessment, well exceeding our target with growth in the typical high growth area on aggregate. 
In the areas of mathematics, we met growth projections in grade six and seven on the math assessment and fell just short of our target growth in grade eight. That said, we saw much more modest growth in our MCAS mathematics overall score, charting two points overall aggregate growth, improving below our target in the school-wide scaled score, and falling in the typical growth low category for mathematics. For science, all three grades showed modest growth in the science math assessment, but missed their target. That said, our grade eight science MCAS Broadmeadow students achieved 1.5 point growth overall in the all student scaled score meeting our projected targets. The growth of many of our students is strong, but we will continue to work to identify gaps in the learning and support with the appropriate interventions as needed. From an academic standpoint, understanding where our students are is always the first step as we complete formative, benchmark, and observational assessments in the fall and rely on summative data from the prior spring to assist us in identifying needs of our students. Beginning on page nine, you will see the identification of specific SMART goals related to ELA, mathematics, science, and social emotional learning that we as a staff feel will work to further support additional growth in our students. For English language arts, we chose to utilize MAP as a benchmark tool to chart overall growth, specifically calculating each grade's growth level uh, projection and targeting informational text, which is an area of relative weakness, both on MAP and MCAS assessments. We understand that almost 90% of texts that students will interact with as they reach higher levels of education in the workforce will be informational texts. So having the appropriate strategies and skills to work with these texts will be crucial. Through action steps, staff will focus on text dependent questions, using text features to support comprehension and understanding an increase in the level of complexity of the questions they are asking. On page 15, I will draw you to our school-wide math goal, built very much the same way as our ELA goal, with a focus on growth, using individual map data, and placing a focus on growth in statistics and probability in grade six and eight, and geometry in grade seven. Grade six will place increased focus on graphing and data distribution, while focusing on bivariant data in grade eight. In grade seven, you will see a focus placed on more authentic assessments using critical thinking skills to solve real world math problems using surface area. In our science goal, on page 17, we have targeted the physical science strand in grade six to eight, which will be reflected at each grade level with a specific focus on physical science topics, as well as making this the area of focus for our 2023-2024 STEM fair later in March. Finally, you'll see our fourth and final goal, which is a focus on the overall social and emotional health and wellness of our students. Success and challenges for our students in this area can be reflected in so many data points that I've witnessed over the years, like attendance, engagement, and extended day activities, student day, uh, safety and discipline reports, and finally through the vocal survey, which really includes stu student voice and takes all of these things into consideration. We chose using, using student rating of our school on the vocal survey as a measure to elevate student voice in this plan, but I feel action steps reflect the importance on attendance, engagement, and student safety as well. Specifics of our fourth goal allow me to highlight our partnership this year with the Shamrock All-Star Foundation, our further implementation of open parachute lessons, and increased offerings in our extended day programmings to further engage our students in learning beyond the regular school day. Communication will also be the key to our success as we continue to practice our sending weekly newsletters to our families, highlighting important school events using our SMORE system. SMORE allows us to translate our newsletter into many languages, supporting many of our Broadmeadows families who speak over 20 different languages in our school. We are excited to continue our robust extended day program, which is servicing over 200 students currently in grades six to eight. Through a blend of academic support programs, enrichment activities, and intramural and extramural sports, we are excited to include so many of our students beyond the bell, both in the morning and the afternoon. We are especially excited to bring back our Broadmeadows drama program this year, looking ahead to our students performing Annie Junior in March. And as much as I've enjoyed cross country, volleyball, robotics, and flag football, just to name a few, listening to our Operation Days Work students work with other sites around the country to choose a school in the Congo as a recipient of the ODW grant this year was truly a powerful experience and one that I'm sure our students will not forget. We also continue to be proud of the connections we forge with our families and the involvement we have, uh, they have with our school. I'd like to thank our active PTO who supports school events and initiatives already supporting all three grades attending school field trips and certainly looking ahead to supporting more exciting authentic learning experiences for our students moving forward. Last but not least, I'd like to take the opportunity to thank the students, staff, and families of the Broadmeadows Middle School for welcoming me with open arms to their community.
It has been a wonderful start to the year, and I look forward to our continued success working together. I thank you for the opportunity to serve the students and families of Broadmeadows, and I welcome any questions or feedback you may have on our plan. Thank you so much, folks. Mr. Santoro. I just wanted to thank you, Mr. Hearn, for not skipping a beat <laughs> and coming in ready to go and staying right where you are. You've done a marvelous job, and I just wanted to thank you. Thank you, Mr. Santor. Ms. Cahill? Yeah, I, I think I just have the same um, comment. Just um, thank you for taking the lead there, and I think they're really lucky to have you. Um, look forward to seeing how, the, how things are going to go while you're there. I'm sure it's going to be great. Um, I had a question about in your facilities. Sure. Um, <clears throat> first, I did want to make a comment across the board so far. Um, our class sizes are amazing. I mean, we are so lucky. And, um, you know, I, I think the public needs to understand that we're really lucky and that, that what, we're, what we're doing in our class sizes. Um, the, um, so on election day, mm -hmm. lucky for me, I wasn't on the ballot, but I, I hit all the um, bake sales. Sure. In the, in the, in Thank the you eight, for coming. I ate a couple of cookies <laughs> in between. I didn't cook anything. Drove, ate cookies. Um, I, I, I came to the school, and I'm looking at facilities, and I went in the back where the, the election was, and yep. it was, of course, in New England, you know, it gets dark at like 4. Um, there was, is the lighting really dark in the back in the parking lot area coming into your school at night? Yep. Um, I'll say that I haven't observed it. I was actually just back there about uh, half an hour ago, uh, uh, maybe more like an hour ago for the end of our volleyball game. Yeah. It is darker back there. The whole a That whole area, to be perfectly frank with you, could use a fair amount of work um, from lighting to um, paving. There's actually a, a transformer box there too. It's um, things are, I, I had spoken with um, Mr. Hines and Mr. Bellotti to start the year. And, and my hope is for some continued uh, uh, improvement there as well. So, but it's, it's, it's a, yeah, it's a little bit of a challenging area. Yeah. Dark. yeah. I mean, and I think, you know, that's something I think that we should be really looking at at some point. I'll check the lighting there too. I don't know if it's. Uh, um, but thank you, thank yeah. you. We look forward to seeing what you're going to do there. I'm sure it's going to be great. <coughs> thank you. Mr. Gattro. Nick, you left quite a legacy at um, Marshall. And, so I'm going to give you a pass here. But I, I do want to say that I've heard from a lot of parents, PTO parents, that are delighted at Meadows with you. You know, uh, how great you're doing, how approachable you are, how responsive, you know. So the legacy that you had at Marshall, you're continuing. And whatever we can do to help you, we want to do. Thank you, Mr. Gattro. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Gattro. Uh, yeah, I have to say I agree. Um, I've heard the same thing from parents. Uh, it's lovely to hear. I love the fact that you're really pushing the family engagement. And the fact that you have so many of your kiddos in extended day right now is huge. It really is huge. I really am happy that you have a smart goal around your absenteeism uh, and your so social emotional learning um, and the uh, smart goal around um, the vocal survey. So I'm really, really, really happy to see those two things. Your absenteeism has improved, but still is an issue, which you mentioned. So I know that we'll be looking at that as a district as well to see what we can do. Um, but really, I, I think your plan is, is wonderful, and I would entertain a motion to accept it. Mrs. Cahill, seconded by Mr. Santoro. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Motion to adjourn. Seconded by Mr. Santoro.